Hi everyone, I'm Shelly Moore, host of 5 More Minutes. Welcome to our special edition home learning series. Today's topic is visual sketchbooks. Okay, my friends, so last session, last episode, we were talking about the importance of visuals, and I was so excited about it. Cousin Paul, he does all the editing. He was just like, Shelly, you need to sit down, because I was so excited. I was standing, and I was moving, and I was bebopping back and forth across the screen like this. He's like, I can't edit this. You gotta sit. You gotta sit. So I'm sitting still. I have lots of space over here for all of the visuals. Okay. See? Lesson learned. So today, I'm going to talk slow. I'm still excited though, don't get me wrong. So today, we're talking about a specific visual strategy that is one of my faves. It is called Visual Schedule. And you know what? I bet all of us use these in some way. If you have an agenda book, you have a visual schedule. So basically, when we're talking specifically about visual schedules, it's basically taking something and breaking it down into little steps. Because if you're like me, it's very overwhelming to think of an entire day and to remember everything that goes into an entire day. So a visual schedule is a way to say, okay, so let's take kind of a chunk of time and break it down into steps, right? Um, you know how good it feels to check something off your list? Well, this is what we're doing for kids, okay? So we're creating a sequence. We're gonna think about things in positive descriptions about things that we need to do over time. This can be a routine. This can be breaking down kind of expectations, um, breaking something down into smaller steps. But Basically, why we do this, that was Finley, why we do this is it creates a lot of predictability for kids to know what's coming. A day is a very long time. And especially when things are unpredictable, like right now, kids' entire schedules have been thrown out the window. And so this is going to be a really useful strategy to use at home to say, okay, well, how are we going to break down our day to show kind of like where are the consistencies in the routine so that kids know what's coming. Um, we talked about this last week too, but also like visual schedules are really going to increase autonomy and independence because kids can refer to a visual schedule whether or not there's a person there helping them, right? Now, kids may need also verbal support and modeling and gesturing, which we're going to talk about. But at the end of the day, a visual support is actually a really useful tool so that we don't have to repeat ourselves over and 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 over again. Visual schedules are also really good if you want to teach a new skill and kind of break it down into chunks. Um, what I find visual schedules really useful for is increasing perseverance because I'm just like, okay, I got one more, I got two more. It kind of shows me where the end is so that I can work towards it. Um, and often a lot of visual schedules will incorporate kind of a finished component. So like you can physically take off that visual and put it somewhere else to show that you've completed it. You know, like that, the satisfaction of checking something off. Um, but I think one of the, the biggest important, important things about visual schedules is that it helps kids to know um, and help them to understand what we're trying to communicate with them. And if visuals are a, form, um, a preferred form of communication, you know, helping kids to understand what we're trying to communicate is going to decrease frustration. It's going to decrease um, challenging behavior. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this. We're going to start with how. So how do you build a visual schedule? And then I'm going to show you a whole bunch of examples, okay? So if we're going to build a visual schedule, the first thing you want to do is kind of figure like, what's the goal? Like, what's kind of the end goal here? Is the goal to kind of get through a day? Is the goal to learn a specific task? Um, is the goal to, you know, kind of like get through a period of time? I always think like when I learned about visual schedules, the first, like the assignment that we had to do was um, to teach someone how to brush their teeth. Like, how would you break that down? What are the steps? Um... So it can be brush teeth, it can be wash hands, it can be um, going to visit grandpa, uh, it can be kind of going through the whole schedule of the day, it, really anything. But kind of think to yourself, kind of like, what's the end task here? Um, and then and then simply just break that down into steps. Now, depending on your kid and depending on who the individual is that you're working with, those steps might be able to be bigger or smaller. So, for example, like some people might just see like a symbol of a toothbrush and that means go brush my teeth. But other people might need that symbol actually broken down into even further steps. And the more fluent kids get with the schedule, the more we can start to combine some of those symbols um, to represent a period of time as opposed to represent an individual step. So the length of the schedule is going to very, very much depend on your particular kid um, or a particular person that you're working with. Um, may They may need one schedule for a whole day or they may need like multiple schedules throughout their day, almost as kind of like... Um, 
like a hierarchy kind of thing, right? And, and so slowly over time, you can reduce the amount of visuals that are needed. Uh, but there's some people who may need visuals further forever like myself just the amount decreases but if we're introducing new things it's very possible you may need a longer sequence um so then so first step identify the goal second step break down that task or that goal into smaller steps third step determine the length of your schedule fourth step this is my favorite step is now we need to figure out which visual to use okay so there's a few different types of visuals that you're going to have to decide what's going to work best for your particular person um the most accessible visual is an object okay what do i got here what do i got here um let's see like okay so this cup this cup can represent coffee time right so this is an object that results <laughs> There's no coffee in it. Um, this can represent a, a period of like an activity. It'd be like, we're going to have coffee. Um, maybe another one could be, oh, here's a book. This is the, our next book club book, right? Here's a book. This can represent reading time, right? So having an actual, actual object can help. Um, you can also use videos. You can use photos. Pictures, symbols, drawing words. Like we talked about this last time, last episode. Is there's many different types. And so sometimes the hard part is figuring out what's going to work best for your particular child student person um the other i'm gonna show you examples of all of them but the other really beneficial thing is just like we like to check things off lists or cross things off when things are done to have some sort of system where when a task is completed there's a way to um like to show that on your visual schedule. So sometimes you can have where you cover it up, you can check it off, or you can actually take it off and put it somewhere else. So I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of things. Um, in terms of troubleshooting, cause I know like even yesterday I got a message saying, be like, what if, what if my kid hates visuals? Well, it just might mean that it's not the right visual for them, right? So a couple ideas for troubleshooting. Um, if a student or, or, or a kid or whoever you're working with at all, this isn't specifically for kids at all. Um, if they're not attending to or engaging with a specific visual, Visual, just try a new one right like if they don't like symbols try pictures if they don't like pictures try objects if they don't like visuals at all try words all of those things are going to are going to help um the other thing too is if there's a one particular step that they're having a hard time with it just might mean they might not know what that symbol means i mean symbols are pretty vague right and so um if they're having a hard time with one particular step it just might mean you need a new symbol for that step or a new picture visual for that step or it might mean that that step needs to be broken down a little bit more okay but here's gonna be here's my favorite part right because when we're talking about visuals, sometimes it gets really, really easy to fall into the compliance trap, okay? Now, this is very important. Compliance is never the goal, ever. Never, 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 never the goal. And often, if, if we're only using visuals to tell kids what to do, that's actually not helpful at all because it's not building their, their autonomy, which is the goal, okay? So one way to avoid the compliance trap, which is just us just telling kids what to do, which is not, this is not going to help them to become independent, is to really involve kids as much possible as much as possible through the process. So for example, um, I remember when I was school-based, one thing that I would do with my kids is when I had to teach them a new skill, I would bring in my camera. Now, you don't need a fancy camera, but kids like fancy cameras. So I'd bring in my fancy camera and I'd be like, hey, I need you, I need your help today. And we would kind of go through the sequence together and I would get them to be a part of creating the visuals, choosing which ones they like, being a part of the facial features. There was one little guy that I was teaching him how to sit in the desk. <laughs> because he was sitting in it upside down now I could do that for him or I could do that with him and the more you do it with them the more buy-in they're going to get so I'm just like okay show me what it means to put your feet on the floor show me what that means and I would take a picture and I'd be like okay hey, well what else is really important to know if we're going to sit in our desk and he'd be sitting there and they'd be like oh maybe I can hold something to keep my hand still I'm like that's such a great idea right not that you always have to keep your hand still but you know what I'm saying like getting their input helping them to create these kind of expectations um that co construction is going to create more and more buy-in and so if you're getting some restriction back often it's because kids had no say the more say kids have in what behavior looks like sounds like feels like how routines are going to be constructed over time getting kids to be involved in that process the more buy-in you're going to get so personalize them with pictures of kids co-construct the schedule with kids so that they are a part of creating it and the last one is we can't just tell kids how to use schedules. We have to show them. And so one really useful trick, it's called thinking out loud. 
and it's exactly how it sounds is how can I model to someone how to use this and so sometimes I'll just be like oh well this step is done I'm gonna put this over here what do I think is next maybe I oh look it's right there like pretend that you're using the visual schedule with your kid and model talking out loud that process it feels funny at first but honestly kids seeing that is teaching them how to use it you can't just tell them what to do right because if they're they, they, if you just tell them what to do, it's compliance. Show them with them. They can try it out. It's a lifesaver. It's a lifesaver. Okay. I want to show you some examples. Okay. So we're going to kind of go through a couple of these. The first one I'm going to show you is objects. Now, I love this version. Honestly, I think you can do this with, like, honestly, if you're having a hard time with kids engaging and connecting with visuals, because um, they can come sometimes be really abstract, visual or objects are really, really great. And you can represent an object in terms of a schedule. I've seen this, like an actual object stuck to a piece of paper. I've seen it where you can get kind of like, you know, those tool bins for tool or for um, like screws and stuff at the hardware store, those little bins, they can stick together. An object can represent a different part of the day. I have seen miracles with object schedules so that kids can know, especially if they have a vision impairment, to help them be a part of what to happen and what's to expect during the day, right? So um, I have a couple, for every one of these examples, I'm going to put all of the links to these examples in the notes at the end of this video and also in the description. So because all of these links, I've got video links, I've got blogs, I've got a Pinterest post. If you want to follow up and learn more about these, these pictures, definitely follow up, okay? So this is objects where the actual object represents that chunk of time or that chunk of task, okay? So that's the most accessible. The next level of accessibility is going to be photos, where this is actually you're taking pictures of your child doing this activity and then somehow showing that to them. So, I mean, this can be as hardy or as not as you want. Like, you can laminate these, you can Velcro these, but very simply, sometimes this might just be even be on an iPad, but kids can physically see either through a video or through a photograph actual visuals of them doing it right um that's going to really really connect with them uh photos what else do i got here photos and then we have pictures and symbols so there are a ton there are a ton of websites out there that are going to um, give you access to visuals. Some of them you can pay for. Some of them are free. I'm going to show you a free one today. Some of the most common ones, um, Boardmaker. I love Boardmaker. Uh, Boardmaker, Symbol Sticks, Lesson Picks, all of these um, are 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 symbol programs that you can purchase. The thing is here though, parents, is most districts and schools have a license of one of these three. So if there's specific visuals that you're looking for, connect with your school and be like, hey, do you have a symbol for pancakes? You know, like they can get that to you, okay? Um, if Honestly, if they can't get it, send me an email. I'll send you the visual of the pancakes, right? I have I have a subscription to Symbol Sticks just because it's really helpful when I'm working in schools and need a symbol at the ready. It's also really helpful for me. Okay, so symbols. Um, you can see that these examples here, you can break them up by by portion of the day. Um, you can also break them up in terms of like an activity within part of the day, like every one of these, like getting dressed could be a whole sequence in itself. So this just depends on your student to say, you know, when I show them the symbol of pancakes, do they know what that means? Do I show them the symbol of swimming? Do they know what that means? Or do we need to kind of break that down into smaller steps? Oh, this is so fun. Okay, so we got objects, we got photographs, we got symbols. Um... This one, and, and this one I know we all use, this is visual schedules with words, okay? And so, like I say, we all of our agendas have words in them, but I have two little pictures here with links. Um, this is actually a strategy um, to do, doing, and done. This is actually a strategy that um, a lot of university students are taught. You just put them on post-it notes, be like, this is the things I need to do today. This is what I'm working on right now. And this is when I know that it's finished, right? So even like the visuals, and you can color code those visuals if you want. When I was um, 
working with my my students we'd have like all of the things that were work activities in one color and all of the things that were choice activities in another color and I'd be like okay pick your three work activities you're going to do today pick your three choice activities you're going to do today and then we would build our schedule that way so I created the opportunities but like to keep them engaged they got the actual final choice okay so um checklists are also going to be really good here but again just get keep kids involved model that process um, okay, so the last thing I want to show you, so all of these examples that I'm showing you are going to be posted. Okay, so if you want to follow up with any of these, there's write-ups, other examples, videos, definitely spend some time looking. But the last resource I actually want to show you before our time is up is this website here. It's called connectability.ca. Incredible resource, and this is a way that you can create visuals for free. Free visuals. So I'm going to put this link in the notes, but if you look at this here, it actually gives you different possible templates to depending on what type of visual you want, but it gives you a whole bunch of examples of what it might look like. And once you click on one, there's an opportunity for you to add your own pictures as visuals, but they also have a bank of visuals to choose from. So if you like type in go for a walk, for example, a symbol will come up from a walk. It's not as exhaustive bank as one of some of the assemble like board maker for example or symbol sticks but it's a really great place to start to see if this is something that will work for your family definitely give this a try i'll show another resource in our next video but just something to play around with but even if you just use this for the templates and upload photos yourself it's going to be magical it's going to be magical okay my friends so that's a lot that's a lot of stuff i'm going to post all of these links for you um in our resources section um but here's your challenge can't i can't i can't leave you without a challenge so here you go i want you to think about a, a common routine in your family this might be movie night on fridays this might be going to church on sundays this might be your morning routine of wake up breakfast whatever you do whatever you do it might be a time you're having a hard time with right like going to bed and i want you to think okay so what's the end goal here i want my kid to go to sleep so then try to think like what are the kind of the four or five steps before that to help kids transition to that okay so you know we have to maybe like not look at our phone for the for the hour before we try and go to sleep we're gonna put our phones away we're gonna pick out our pajamas we're gonna have a little snack we're gonna read a bed read read a bed read a book we're gonna have a little snoogle we're gonna turn off the light do you know what i mean to be like because then when you show that you could be like okay what's next What's next? And getting them through that process is going to actually teach them that, teach them that. But I can't say this enough times, get kids involved in the process. What do you think next should be, right? Because that's where the, that, that, that co-construction that's really going to create the buy-in. Wow. What an adventure. I love these videos. They are so fun. Okay. So Saturday, May 16th, 11 a.m. PST, we're going to have another Q&A. So definitely come on uh, Facebook and Instagram Live and check in with us. If you have any questions or comments um, or have ideas for future videos, definitely come on. Um, I will be there for about yeah, 20 minutes to half an hour. We can answer any questions that you have. And uh, yeah, and then our next, video, our next two videos are actually going to be focused specifically on visuals. Our next uh, episode is going to be about a strategy called First Then another visual strategy that I use every single day. Friends, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss anything, but you can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, all of the things. I can't wait to see you. You're lovely. You're amazing. Hang in there. We're getting through this together. You can do it. Deep breath. I love you. Bye, everybody.